Good morning. <laughs> oh, I forgot my watch. I'm gonna go back inside. Okay, watch secured. It is 5.30 in the morning and today is Thursday, July 6th. And today is day one of the start of our IVF journey. And that's really scary to say out loud. <laughs> so what's today? Today I have my, like the majority of my blood draws. It's either four or five, I can't remember what she said on the phone. I got everything set up yesterday. I spent a little bit of time yesterday getting this all set up. And basically what this journey is, is the first 10 days of your cycle, you have a lot of appointments. Um, I have three three days that are pretty, pretty packed. Uh, I have today, Monday, and Wednesday. And then after that, we'll have a consult with our doctor, just making sure like my body's good to go to move forward. And so fingers crossed, we'll be good to go and there won't be any hiccups, but it's basically like we get this week done and then we'll see if we have the green light. So today I have, like I said, I think it's four, it might be five blood draws, like what they're um, getting. I don't remember. I, I like wrote it all down, but it doesn't really matter. And then also today I start my prescription. I've never been on birth control, which I said in a video once or a comment, or there was a comment section on it and people were like really shocked. I've never been on birth control. Um, which like in the beginning of our marriage, we just decided that I didn't want to be on it for hormonal reasons. I just, just wasn't my thing. So we just tracked my cycle. And then when we tried to get pregnant, I think that's another reason why we were so shocked, but at the same time, maybe shouldn't have been. So I'm going to be taking easy bloom. It's like a pink package. Um, and so this is only a 21 day pack. And I have two more prescriptions. I actually have to get those filled like today or tomorrow, just so I have, like I'm like a control freak. Okay, I'm a control freak. I like to have everything set. So I'll go get these filled, um, at least one more because I will be taking it for 24 days and this pack only lasts for 21. And this is basically just so she can control my entire cycle. So that way when she does the next ultrasound, when she does the egg retrieval, when we stimulate ovulation for the egg retrieval, um, my body's just set, so there's no guesswork involved. So, after my appointment today, once I get the green light that my blood work looks good, I'll start taking that for 24 days. Monday, I have a, I'm gonna butcher this word so bad, I'm not, I have another ultrasound, it's the ultrasound of the uterus, it's sauna something, does not sound very enjoyable, and then on uh, Wednesday, I have my HSG test, which they actually put you under for, um, with anesthesia. So yeah, <laughs> and that's just to, I believe per my Google searches, that is the one where they kind of are looking in your fallopian tubes to make sure everything's clear and ready to go. And they put iodine in you. Um, but yeah, today is blood work and my first ultrasound. And after all this, we get the green light and we go into our blood work and base ultrasound and then egg retrieval. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, am I nervous? Am I scared? I feel less scared now than I did the other day when it was kind of like all thrown at me because I feel like I was, I'm was i kind of able to think through it a little bit. So I feel less scared. Um, more excited just to get answers. I kind of switched my mindset from, as of right now, I kind of switched my mindset from all this pressure, it's all on me, to let's just see what happens. Like, no expectations. Like, let's have no expectations. Let's see what happens. I mean, we could get a red light, we could get a yellow light, or we could get a green light. We don't know until we start looking, and the female body is just so detailed. Uh, I'll see you in a little bit, in a couple hours, when I go in for my appointment. I am fasting today as well. I started fasting last night. I've had nothing but water. Why is it when they say you can't have anything, then you want something? <laughs> Every other day, I would be totally fine. I don't usually eat in the morning. I actually didn't work out today either because I didn't know how bad I would feel for the fact that like I would be fasting until my appointment at noon, which isn't very long, Because, but normally I eat breakfast at like 9, 9.30, 10, somewhere in there, and I also always have like some kind of energy in the morning, coffee, something, tea, anything, literally anything. Sometimes pre-workout if I work out, but I thought, you know what, just because I don't know how I'm going to feel later, I better not get, get up and work out. But I got up at the same time anyways, and I was just like watching YouTube, but I got ready, and now I'm gonna head to work for a couple hours and try to distract myself <laughs> 
from the day and my husband's gonna meet me there at my appointment so that's really nice and then the, the other appointments I have I made for later in the day so he wouldn't have to take off work he could just like buzz in and come to the appointments because it's important for me that he's there just like for support but also so he can you know see everything that's happening so I'll check in with you before my appointment later today hello I just got to my appointment and I'm not feeling super good <laughs> My husband is on his way too and I was telling him like I don't feel very good like I'm getting a migraine and he's like babe It's because you literally have some kind of caffeine every morning and I've just been drinking water and so I feel like That is causing a migraine which is unfortunate, but I drank almost two of these so I'm super hydrated Um, I think I'll be okay. I might actually close my eyes for like five minutes. Um, just so I can like shut off and not think about this. I don't love needles. It took me until I was 30 years old to get my ears pierced. Um, so blood draws are not my favorite, but we're gonna do this because it's gonna be worth it. So I might film a little bit inside, I might not. It just kind of depends on how nervous I get. So if not, I'll check in with you after. I just say today went so good for what I know of it so far quick update and I'm gonna continue this vlog Monday and Wednesday so you can get all of my appointments in one I just got home it's like 7 10 I had my appointments and then I went back to work and I'm about to take my medication my pill fingers crossed this doesn't make me nauseous or have migraines because that's the side effects um, but I did a full panel of blood full panel of blood work and they didn't call me so that tells me that we were good because they said if they call me then there's something we need to fix don't take your prescription I didn't get any calls so I'm hoping that's good and then I went in for an ultrasound and oh my gosh you guys I was literally like holding my breath all day because like what's going on in there I don't know we can't see from the outside but my doctor was like so happy she told me i have beautiful ovaries and lots of eggs and she took pictures and then i took pictures of the screen and like i i took my husband with me to my appointment and um because he also had to get some blood work done just like one quick one like i had 16 vials he had one like <laughs> but um when i like sat up after the ultrasound i look at him and he just had tears in his eyes and just like a lot of relief because I had told him that I was like already pre-beating myself up like feeling like you know not getting my hopes up for getting a green light today just kind of like smashing those hopes if you will so that way I wouldn't get pre-excited or anything so like I think we got the green light today we have Monday's appointment and Wednesday's appointment and then we'll sit down with our doctor and be all out if we're ready for the next step if not we might have some more work to do actually Saturday July 8th and I was about to take my medication and go for a run I've been taking it in the morning um, and I wanted to check in really quick so yesterday was the day after my appointment Friday July 7th because I had my appointment on Thursday July 6th and yesterday <laughs> I woke up really nauseous so nauseous it was I have still worked out I got in a 20 minute run and a lower body workout um, I've been doing the Gar uh, Carolyn Caravan, uh, what's it called? Epic Heat Series. Love it. So I did lower body, 20 minute run, and then afterwards I walked for 10 minutes. That did help. I noticed if I'm ever nauseous, a little bit of movement for some reason helps me. And then sometime around like 10 a.m., I had the worst <laughs> cramping and bloating. It was awful. It was so uncomfortable all day. Um, I did end up taking ibuprofen around noon, which I like never take. Um, but I guess from the ultrasound, 
one of the side effects is like cramping and bloating so that was cool and then probably the side effects of the medication is um nausea <laughs> love that for me so i'm hoping if i take it in the morning i won't wake up nauseous i just might be nauseous throughout the day but if i eat i can combat that a little bit i also want to share with you what i got yesterday i follow laura beverlin which i'm sure many of you do over on social media and she shared a pill case that she had and i asked her for the link and i know she's super busy she'll obviously she didn't link it and I couldn't find the one she had on Amazon, so randomly I had to run to the Dollar Tree yesterday and I found this one and I got it. So it is a little different than hers. Hers was a, like these were all connected. I got three of these. Um, it does say morning and night, but I don't know what I'm gonna need exactly yet, but I figured for a dollar, I might as well jump on that and get it. So I got three of these. My thought is I can fill one with morning, one with afternoon, and one with evening pills, and then I can take the afternoon ones with me or whatever, or keep them separate, and then I'd probably just write on the top with a Sharpie what they are. If this isn't gonna work, I only wasted $3.75 because Dollar Tree. <laughs> I feel like this is becoming our medicine cabinet, and it's like, kind of overwhelming so I'm gonna take this like I said and then go for a run I don't have to take this with food or anything but I prefer I think taking it in the morning than the evening so I know I will remember it so I'm gonna take this what's up YouTube <laughs> This Hello. is Kay, this is the girl I always tell you about, like my best friend that lives next door. This is Kay, and she's taking me to my appointment today, and she's gonna keep me calm and chill, and she's gonna hold my hand, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be a great time. And I'll check in with you after. Hey, it's been a few hours. I actually just got home from work. My friend Kay, who is my best friend, my neighbor, I'm in her wedding, she is marvelous. She actually ended up taking me to my appointment today because I was nervous. I needed moral support, and I did a stupid thing. So, I have a consultant that I work with through my doctor who like sets everything up, I check in with, etc, etc. All my questions go to her. Well, I already knew what today's procedure was. I talked to her on the phone. She helped me schedule it. But I did something stupid yesterday, Sunday. I googled this procedure and I was like, I gotta do a what? A catheter what? And so I was very nervous today thinking I was just gonna be in a lot of pain and like overthinking everything. I've never done this before. Many of you have probably never done this before either. Today's procedure, on a scale of one to 10, and this is coming from someone who, again, was scared to get their ears pierced because I'm scared of needles. So like that kind of tells you kind of my overthinking. On a scale of one to 10, I, would, I wouldn't even mark it a one. It was so fast, it was over in like two minutes. Not a big deal. They're ch they were checking my uterus today, and unfortunately I do have a small polyp, so I have to have surgery. My insurance has to approve that, so I will probably have surgery at the end of next week, if not the beginning of the following week. So within this video, originally I was gonna show you all my appointments and the consult, just to get everything out there. See where you know we are at the end of all this. However, it's just gonna be my three appointments. The one you saw on Thursday, today's, and I do have one Wednesday, which the nurse did tell me, because I asked her when she came in the room today. I was like, so how bad does this suck? She's like, oh girl, it's not that bad. She's like, it's like a two out of 10. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm expecting like a nine out of 10. Um, she said though, Wednesdays. Guys, if this was live, I would beg you for prayers. <laughs> so Wednesday's not gonna be very fun. It is what it is. I'm tough. I keep telling myself that. My boss was so sweet. She's like, girl, you run 50 miles for fun. You're gonna be fine. So I have Wednesday's appointment and then I'll, I'll vlog like the surgery and consult together so i'll have another vlog because it's just too much i feel like to put in one and it's like a, like three maybe even four weeks long but i will say my consultant did tell me that we are still on track for egg retrieval on the 16th so as long as everything looks good so far i keep getting green lights even though today was like oh we have a little something my doctor was not concerned she says no big deal we just need everything to be 100 so when we do a transfer the eggy stick and we have beautiful babies so i'll see you wednesday um i probably won't be this chipper on wednesday because <laughs> i'm gonna be nervous again literally anytime i'm just gonna tell you right now it's an emotional roller coaster if you've been through this you understand if you've not been through this and you are walking through this two things i can tell you let your body, let your mind feel the emotions and don't Google anything.
good morning i got gas really quickly and now sorry for the sun i am heading into work it is wednesday july 12th and i have an hsg scheduled for two o'clock today not gonna lie woke up so early and nervous again yesterday was the day after my son uh something sorry let's um my uterine ultrasound that i had i think it was a uterine ultrasound um yesterday was a little bit crampy not gonna lie today still a little bit crampy but i got up i worked out did my like normal morning routine i'm going to work for a few hours um probably leaving work around one because i have to be at the appointment by 1 30 and then the procedure starts at two my husband's going to take me um Hopefully we can make this the car switch, but the nice thing is it's literally like I could walk there. It's so close to my house. So that's nice, um, but a little nervous, not gonna lie. I feel like it's just common to be nervous. An HSG, which by the way, in the beginning of this video, I feel like I just got all the information mumbled, jumbled, because I read every procedure and then I kind of got them confused. The HSG is an x-ray of the uterus and the fallopian tubes, but they do have to insert some kind of something to get adequate pictures. So honestly, at this point, I'm kind of tired of every couple of days <laughs> having something, but it's fine. I'm sure this is not enjoyable for anyone. I'm just hoping that again, I keep getting green lights and that when I meet with my doctor again after my next procedure, she's like, girl, you're looking good. Let's make those babies. So I'm checking in just because I'm nervous, but off to work and I'll see you before my appointment. Hello, so it's been two days since my HSG and I wanted to come on and chat about it, hopefully give you some helpful tips if you have to do an HSG and then actually ask those who have had one who are watching this video to also give tips because I feel like this is the scariest in my opinion, and also the opinion of my nurse, my doctor, the doctor who did the procedure, and the rad tech nurse that was there. Like, it's a very intense, anxiety-provoking procedure, not only because of what the procedure is, but also the outcome, and I feel like as women, you don't know what's going on inside your body and this test is done for fertility so you're just anxious already going in if you don't know what an hsg is and you have to take one i highly recommend <laughs> reading up on it i did with my friend and i was like i don't i don't want to read anything else like once we got to like paragraph two i was like nope <laughs> they'll tell me what it is when i get in the door and truly they did but you can read up on it if your kind of anxiety allows you to your doctor will also tell you about it or your consult or whoever um i know they briefly told me about it when i was in my doctor's office but i kind of like phased out what they were saying i just kind of like i don't know i just didn't want to hear it and then i did read about it and i was like nope but then when i went in the day of they explained it to me again so it is an HSG is when they actually um, do an x-ray of your fallopian tubes and your uterus to see if your uterus is in the right spot, if it's the correct size, if there's any abnormalities, and then they actually fill you with dye so they can see everything really nice and they see if your tubes are open or if they're blocked or again any abnormalities or anything so if you have any fertility issues you will know with this test and then it goes back to your doctor and then your doctor, well we'll see what my doctor does with mine. but. Here's my experience. I got to the outpatient clinic. My doctor did not do this procedure at 1.30. I was told to get there 30 minutes early, otherwise there would be a $75 late fee. I checked in, I waited in a large waiting room, and then they called me back like 10 minutes after I got in there. So it was like one, well, I was early, so it was probably right at 1.30. They called me back and I waited in another waiting room with a lot of people that were doing x-rays. It was kind of like in the x-ray portion of the building, and I took my husband with me because I was told that I would not, I should not go back to work after, and I needed a driver. And amongst talking to other women on Instagram after me kind of just sharing really quickly that I had an HSG, it went really well, I have a lot of women that told me they weren't told to bring a doctor, or a driver, excuse me, they weren't told to bring a driver, and they didn't say anything about not going back to work, and they wish they would have done both of those things. So big, big tip, 
If you're having an HSG done, I think it's fine to work in the morning unless you have a problem fasting, because that's another thing you do have to fast for. I got a little bit of mixed information that my doctor told me three hours, the clinic told me four, and then another email, well, the person on the phone told me four, and then another email from my clinic actually told me three. So three tended to be the, the way to go. So you can eat and then you have to cut everything off three hours prior. And there actually is a reason for that, not based on like getting blood work done or having anything like crazy, but I did ask my rad nurse and she did say it was because a lot of women get very anxious, they pass out, they might throw up, so they actually recommend not eating before just so your body and your blood sugar stays level. Okay, so go back to my appointment because I'm getting a little off track. Got there and once I got back to the ultrasound, or excuse me, the x-ray portion of the waiting room they gave me a hospital count and they said the changing rooms down the hallway go ahead and change we'll have you back in a couple of minutes and then just hang out so awkwardly i hung out in a hospital gown for a very very long time because two o'clock comes around 2 15 comes around 2 20 comes around i'm like i'm getting a little bit anxious also i'm not feeling well because I'm on a birth control prescription as I've shared many times and it makes me very nauseous and I'm hot and I have nothing to drink and I'm just in this gown like thank god I had my husband there because he is so calm and so loving that he just was like babe you're gonna be okay like just breathe through it and I was like I'm just not feeling well and then you have the anxiety of the procedure so I sat there they did keep coming out like every 10 minutes and be like we're really sorry it's gonna be a little bit but you're up next cool um, so I went back about 2.50. So it was about an hour that I waited in the waiting room. I went back, the rad tech nurse, I don't know if she's a rad tech and a nurse, but like she basically was everything. She was so incredibly nice. I'm actually going to go today and get a gift card for Starbucks and drop it off at the clinic for her because like, guys, she was amazing. I told her like five times before I left, I gave her a hug and just told her like, I don't know if I could have done this without you. Like you were absolutely just the most amazing person and the fact that this is what you do full time i hope that you hear from every single lady that comes through here like how amazing you are and what a difference you're making but she explained everything to me the post procedure procedures <laughs> um because you have to be very very careful not to get an infection so like she gave me like the rundown i signed a bunch of papers yada 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 she also told me that i could ask the doctor for my results um, immediately when he came in the room I could ask as long as on my chart my doctor didn't specify that I wasn't supposed to know like do not tell patient results if my doctor wanted to go over them fully with him with me so when he came into the room I did say hey actually she did because I was really nervous um, she was like would you like me to ask and I was like yeah cuz <laughs> I was how was service um she was like hey uh, Miranda wanted to know if she could know her results today he's like absolutely it's not on your chart so like I can let you know as as the procedures going through so you know you off release it on the table all that stuff happens here's my biggest tip and this is actually not even from me but from the lady the rad tech slash nurse um she asked me if i wanted stress balls and i was like absolutely like to me it's just something to take my mind off of it but also to like keep my breathing going really really well and she said a lot of women don't prefer them but she actually finds them to be extremely helpful so you can keep your breathing and it helps you from getting tense so she kind of like is like walking me through like you know don't tense up keep breathing keep breathing and i'm just literally i just had these two stress balls right here and i'm laying on the table and i'm just like and it helped so much so if you do an hsg even if you're not in a person that is like kind of like me, like fidgety, highly recommend the stress balls because it just keeps your breath really even. And I had a few people over on Instagram also share their experience with me. It's not pleasant. Um, the doctor actually said that most women who have had childbirth that might have secondary infertility, who have had an HSG, they actually say it's worse than childbirth because with childbirth, the contractions, um, you get a break from them depending on your body and the time of your HSG. A quick one is 10 to 15 minutes. Mine was about 12-ish minutes because they timed it. Um, some people, like the lady before me, hers was over an hour and a half. So I couldn't even imagine sitting there and all of that just, 
I'm just gonna say all that pain <laughs> uh, for an hour and a half like I I would have passed out so again I'm not saying this to scare you I'm sharing this because I feel like a lot of people don't talk about it the few videos I watched of people that had an HSG were like oh it sucked like and it's like yes it does suck but like you can do it you can do it you are strong you are capable you can do it tell yourself you can do it feel your feelings if you're anxious if you're scared you're allowed to feel that way but take someone with you who will keep you calm and hopefully you have an amazing nurse in the room hopefully you have an amazing doctor they were awesome and take stress balls and just know it's not going to last forever and you can absolutely do this you are strong you are capable you're wonderful and the women like the human body but especially like a woman's body is amazing so then the other tip i would say is after you're done bring something to drink so that way like as soon as you're done i feel like you're just going to feel kind of lightheaded and like you know that anx the anxiety comes down so your blood pressure is coming down bring something to drink that like bubbly so yeah i don't know combats like that anxious nausea if you're like me that gets that so have something to drink so after my test uh the doctor immediately like as soon as he put the dye into my body was like oh your right tube is open and then he's like all right i can see your left tube is opening like let's let wait for it to spill over i did have to kind of shift my hips a little bit on the x-ray table slightly uncomfortable <laughs> because you have everything inside of you it's just like wow this is what we've come up with to torture women with men I just have to say men don't have it that hard when it comes to fertility like I've been teasing my husband all week just about like you have basically done everything and it was nothing <laughs> so anyways after I was done the lady did show me more pictures of the x-rays I unfortunately did not have my phone with me so I didn't get any pictures, but both my tubes were open. My uterus looks really good. The shape of it's good. Um, there's no abnormalities or anything. So I walk back out into the waiting room. And as soon as I saw my husband, I just lost it. Like she literally opened the door and she was telling me to like leave my gown like here after I get changed. And I made eye contact with him. I just started sobbing. And so I walked towards him and then like kind of wait for him to like follow me into the changing room. And there's like a little bench in the changing room and then like little lockers. And I just sat down and I just sobbed. And he was like, babe, are you okay? Like, and he just sat down next to me and he just hugged me and he just was like, you're going to be okay. Like, you know, you're, you're scaring me a little bit. Like, and I just stopped for like <laughs> three or four straight minutes. And then finally I was able to like kind of catch my breath. And I said, I'm crying because I'm happy. And then he started crying because he knew that meant like everything is awesome, like inside. And so he, we're just, we just literally sat there and cried. And so that's why I didn't film afterwards just because like the load that just came off, it was like, so many bricks have been piling on my shoulders for years and they're just falling off and it just feels amazing. If you did not watch my first fertility video um, based on our infertility, my OBGYN told me years ago that it was my fault and so I feel like I've been carrying that with me for so long. And then when we met with our fertility doctor who are work we are working with now because we never saw a specialist before, she actually said based on my... Um, paperwork my what's it called like my um that uh she did not think based on that that i had any issues and then when she tested joe she saw that joe's sperm was really low so she was like again i don't think miranda has any issues so then we went the route to fix joe's uh fertility issues and unfortunately that did not work so now we are doing all the testing to hopefully we get the green light to do IVF. So I'm feeling much better than I was a week ago. So this whole video I feel like encompasses a lot of emotions because you're allowed to feel emotions. And I feel like these are things that just aren't shared enough and that's why I'm showing up. And like I said, I'm gonna show up tired, I'm gonna show up sad, I'm gonna show up emotional, but like that is this journey and I, I don't wanna hide that. It's, it's a huge, part of me and I want to be proud of this one day of all the things that I accomplished and all the fears that I got over and they're not easy tasks and I think a lot of people unfortunately assume that it like fertility problems are women related but over 90% of them are male related and yes there are women that have fertility issues and it sucks it sucks for the guy it sucks for the girl it sucks for everyone it just sucks but 
Um, I do feel like a lot of times on Instagram, because that's where I kind of share things more in more real time, people are like, oh, Miranda, you need to do this or you need to do this. And it, it kind of makes me doubt myself a lot for, for one, for sharing, because I feel like, oh, and then two, I'm just like, I just keep telling myself, like, you have a doctor, follow her guideline, and I have to just kind of mute everything out. But I feel like that's why people don't share is because they're constantly given unsolicited advice or they feel like they're doubting themselves or doubting what they're going through because someone else is telling them something. I feel like we need to be a community that like cheers everybody on. Like you can do this, you got this, I'm proud of you. Instead of like trying to use Google doctors to an entire stranger when you don't actually know what's happening. <laughs> That is it for the week of procedures this week. I am still waiting to hear back on my insurance for a procedure that I'm supposed to do next week. And I will definitely film that and then let you know what happens with our consult with our doctor. And as of yesterday, we we're still on the same timeline. So egg retrieval is in August. And then we are actually uh, waiting probably until October to do transfer just because we have some things already scheduled. Like we have a wedding and this stuff and like we want to make sure that we are you know doing our due diligence at you know not traveling and just being home and relaxing during that transfer time so that's where we're at i will find you next week in more videos make sure you subscribe turn your notifications on i'm not just sharing like my fertility journey i'm still sharing food and all that stuff but this is just a this is just my life. That's what YouTube is. It's just me sharing my life in hopes that I can help someone, encourage someone, or bring light to someone um, who might not be going through the exact same thing as me, but maybe they have a different procedure and they're scared. And like just knowing someone else is going through something can be so comforting. So have an awesome day and I will see you in a new video soon. Bye-bye.